the accident. Wow, the accident. You know, I, I'm just sitting there thinking about sometimes tragedy in life, how it leads us and what we go through. I was thinking about when I got sick. Couldn't shake a fever, didn't know what was going on. I never get sick. Playing Zumba twice a day, sometimes three times a day, exercising. I never got sick. But I couldn't shake this fever. But I also noticed that on the bottom of my foot, that was a cut. Couldn't figure that cut out. It just looked like a blister that had busted. That's what it looked like on my foot. It didn't hurt at all. It really didn't hurt. And I remember looking at it myself and saying, what we're gonna do? And it, it was something simple that any doctor, podiatrist could just fix it up, but I couldn't shake that fever. And I don't know if you've ever had a fever where you're, you're under cover, behind cover, behind cover, behind cover, and you just cannot get warm. No matter what you do, you cannot get warm. That's the space I was at. I couldn't get warm. And no matter what I did, no matter what I tried, it didn't work. So I have made a decision that I never do. I never go to the hospital because I never get sick. Never get sick. You know, being a vegan and eating healthy and taking care of my life, I never got sick. Oh, I had a transformation. Man, I had a transformation. So I decided to go to the hospital. And um, I figured I'd be in there for just a moment, not long at all, and get in and get out. What I saw, was I surprised? So I go through the emergency room like we all do. I check in. They let me come through the door, and I sit there for about 10, 15 minutes. This was one of the blessed days. There wasn't a lot of people in the emergency room, and they let me come in and ask me all these questions, and these two doctors saw me, and I was telling them what was going on, and um, they looked at my foot. Oh, okay, we can bandage this up pretty quick. It won't be no problem. We can take care of you. Well... Another doctor saw me and I was telling him what was going on. Now I went in, remind me now, I went in for a fever or a chill and I knew what was kind of going on but I wasn't sure. So when I went in, they said, well, we need to take you back a little further. We need to draw some blood, see what's really going on with you with this fever and how you're feeling because remember, I literally hopscot walked in, had no problems walking in. My foot looked normal. Both of them, left and right, looked normal. Except the left foot under the bottom had a little cut. Like like I said earlier, like a blister had formed and it popped. And it could have been from the Zumba. It could have been me falling off my steps at my, where I lived at the time. I don't know. Something happened. I went and got checked it out. I went to the back of the emergency room. And this is the part that's really scary. It really is. I'm in the back of the emergency room, they take my blood, they come back and they tell me my white blood cell count is off the chain, which I already knew because it was trying to fight, fight infection. For you that understand white blood cell count, it's trying to fight that fe infection that's going on in my body. But all of a sudden, I promise you, it's probably about 10, 15 doctors come through. Now I'm in the emergency room and I'm, they still haven't addressed my foot. All of them they did was, it's really funny. I cried at this. Um, hey, yo, you got this situation going on. Your your leg is not getting in circulation and uh, we're going to, have to cut your leg off now. Now, that was a lady that came into that room, into the emergency room, downstairs with me. A doctor, she says. I think she was a student doctor, but she come in like she had a knife on her side. Uh, she was in like some army fatigues. It was almost like she was just hanging around the hospital, but she looked at me like, we need to take you straight right now, cut your leg off, cut your foot off, cut your foot off, cut your foot off. That's how it went. Uh, I said, well, we're going to keep you in the hospital. We can't let you go home. We're going to get this, this inflammation out of you and this bacteria, whatever was going on. I knew that was happening. But remember, they never looked at my foot. My foot was just as strong a foot as the other foot. I mean, when I say they never looked at their foot, they never looked at it. They never looked at it. We had to bring somebody in to the emergency room that would look at my foot and address it. They wouldn't address it at all. But they still didn't care about it. 
and not tell them what had happened before. We don't care. Hey, we need to cut your leg off. We need to cut that foot off. We need to cut that foot off. There's no way we're going to get rid of We need to cut that foot off. That's all I heard. And that's probably, when y'all guys, when I say there was a football team around me, these was all doctors. And they was all in their doctor mode, but they were preppy. And it wasn't about me no more. It was about cutting my foot off. If you know me, that was a no-no. Nah, you ain't finna do that right now. Let's see what's going on with my foot so we can fix it, okay? And mind, they never address my foot. So, I'm down in the emergency room for three or four days now. Remember these guys, three or four days for they taking me upstairs. And in the three days, they never addressed my foot. So, the foot toy started to turn colors because it wasn't being addressed at all. They kept coming down every day and doing this saying, hey, we need to cut your leg off, cut your foot off, cut your leg off, cut your foot off, cut your leg off, cut your foot off. That's all I heard. And now when I say every doctor walked in there, all they thought about was cutting my foot off. Now they didn't address the issue at all because I didn't come there for my foot. I, well, I did come for my foot, but they, they, they was, all they was talking about was the system what was going on in my body. They need to take it out right now. Who so I'm going to come to my story. It's, it's, it's just, it was frustrating at the time, but now it's all right. Because you know what? I have took a disaster and turned it into a blessing. I'm going to show you how I did that. So we go upstairs, and um, they, they finally decided to give me some, uh, some high dosage medicine. Man, they were trying to get this fever out of me, which, no problem. No problems. Get it out of me. But the thing about it is, I've never been treated that way in my life. Um, and they did the work on me, and they did the work on me, and they did the work on me. Finally, I got frustrated. I said, can you just send me home with the medicine? And they did, because they wasn't caring about me, period. And I figured I'd go home and take care of myself. Well, I had need to go back because some things was going on that I didn't understand, so I went back into the hospital. This time, I didn't go through the emergency room. I went to the doctor that I had to see, and I just told them they need to take me back upstairs. And that way I waited maybe seven, eight hours to get into the emergency room. I mean, get into a room, but I didn't mind because I didn't have to go to that emergency room no more. What a bad experience. I didn't like that emergency room. So I got through the emergency room. I didn't go through it. I got into the room. They started putting that medicine on me. And I promise you, it looked like I was like, like a Christmas tree of ointment. So they come in. They say, you know what? We're going to have to cut that foot off. Now, I'm in another frame of mind, and I knew... That foot was in trouble, but I didn't know. You didn't have to take the foot. But I asked the doctor, okay, you take my foot. What's going to happen? He said, oh, you can get a prosthetic and we will, you can be able to do things. Okay. That's what they told me. I believed it. And they, they said, so I can get a leg. I asked this doctor 20,000 times. But in this whole scenario, I promise you, every morning, noon, lunch, whatever's going on, they would come see me, and it was all about the hatchet job, hatchet job, hatchet job. Let's cut that foot off. Let's cut your leg off. Let's cut your foot off. I've never seen. It wasn't about the patient no more. It was about, they never, let's go back. They never, ever addressed the foot. Just cut the leg off. So Dr. Combs then said, we're going to do surgery on the foot. We're going to just go and cut it. I said, I ain't got no choice. Well, y'all done did my leg the way it looked, the way they showed me the pictures of it, how it looked, how it done. It actually died. Almost that foot did. It went from my, my color skin to the black of this shirt, and it split. I mean, it opened up like it had died. But they never looked at my foot. <laughs> Man, that's something else. And they never looked at my foot. Oh, my God. They never looked at my foot. So we went to surgery. And um, I came out, and I uh, pain, my God. But now, um, they took my foot, and I think I stayed in my room probably a couple of days, and they took me to therapy. And then this is where it gets interesting is. In therapy, the doctor comes in, and I greeted him. He was like, now, I was coming back in my right mind. Remember, all this time, I went in my right mind. Now, you're talking about being in the hospital almost four months. Remember, guys? I walked in to the hospital. I walked in, hopscotched up the stairs, did what I need to do. Man, how life changes. So he comes in and he looks at me and he says, uh, hey, you know you're not going to be able to walk ever again. Now, keep in mind, I told you earlier, he'd already told me I could walk again. 
they put a prosthetic on me. But he said, where they cut my foot at, they didn't have enough graft or whatever they were going to do to make a circulation where they could give me a leg. Now, keep in mind, I knew about the circulation issue, but it wasn't a problem. I already had it tested many times. That was before my life of changing, eating, and all that stuff. Well, because, man, one time I was a big boy. I was 365 pounds. I, man, I was out of breath. I, but I got a vegan, changed all my world. Not a problem. I looked at that doctor. He says, you never walk again. So immediately, my mind went to my grandchildren and some things that I had nowhere near finished in life. But my grandchildren popped in my head, and I said, you mean to tell me I can't go swing and walk, and I can't go to Zoom, I can't do anything like that in again in my life? He said, no. I said, well, I think you need to go back to surgery. I said, because I said, uh, what do I need to do to get my leg one day? He said, you need to go above the knee. I said, I think we need to get in surgery. And he him hard around. And like, well, I got to go see how can we do this. I don't care how you do it. Take a chainsaw, partner. You got to cut this leg and get me my, get, so I can do something. 48 hours, they, well, 24 hours, they put a note on my door, says, hey, you can't give them no food or drink. You know how they do. They put me back in surgery. They cut the other part of my leg off. Now, that's two traumas. Now, I'm, I'm pretty cool. I, I'm not really cool. I am frustrated. I am furious because of what they just did to me. And I don't know how many of you guys have been in the hospital. I didn't know. They couldn't feed me. Cause the kind of diet I have, they couldn't feed me. So I had to force some things I didn't really care for to give me some equals. They don't, you don't, they don't cater to healthy eating. Well, they consider it healthy eating. That's what they do. But if you're eating like I eat, it's not really what I want, but I have no choice sometimes. So I come out of surgery and they forgot the pain medicine. I can still see every one of those doctors around me. You ever seen the movie, uh, um, Anaconda, when the snake can look around and see everybody? Well, I looked, I was so much in pain, but I looked like Anaconda, that snake. I could see everybody looking, and I'm screaming, where is the pain, man? Well, we can't do it. We don't have to, we forgot to give it to you before you came out. Now, I don't know about you. Whew, pain is pain. That was a pain. And they gave me a nerve block. And they couldn't even get it to work. But they finally got it to work. I woke up in my room and um, they were asking me questions. I was I could answer the questions. About, about four hours later, I woke up. And they had the nerve block on. But now let me tell you about that nerve block. They were showing me how to use it. So the second day, the doctor comes in and says, how you feeling? I said, I'm fine. Now, remember, all during the night, I ain't asked for no kind of drugs or nothing because I didn't think I needed anything because I didn't think I'm hitting that button to take the pain. Man, let me tell you something. The nerve blocker machine never worked. The placebo effect worked. It worked. I didn't realize because the way my diet was, the way I lived, I overrode the, I overrode the pain. That was amazing what happened that day. <clears throat> it was amazing. And I had to figure out how I was going to get myself well. And that's another story. Now, why I'm there. I'm trying to figure this all out. I get out. Or they send me to therapy. Because, you know, honestly, you have to learn how to dress, how to rewalk on a crutch and a walker, how to use a wheelchair, how to really get everything back together. I had to get my mind back because I had lost it. Uh, I promise you, I had lost it. I never depended on nobody for nothing. And I had lost my, I lost it. It took me a minute to get it back. Because some of you are struggling, dealing with issues, and you just don't think there's no way out, but there is a way out. And the thing about it, I was trying to figure out what I was going to eat. Because, you know, you know how we like to juice every morning, make certain things up, all vegetables, and eat them and run out the door, or eat a nice salad and run out the door. So I'm sitting there thinking, how can I fix this for myself. So the therapy was fine. No the problem, great place to go. They showed me how to do everything. Trust me, when they show you how to do everything, they show you how to do everything. And if they hadn't showed me, I couldn't have came home and functioned at all. I couldn't have came home and functioned at all. Now, to the leg, yes, I'm going to get a leg again. I, I am. But I promise you this. It was one of the hardest days of my life. But I, while I was sitting there, and I listened to everything motivational. I tried to write, but for a couple of months, my mind wasn't there. It was not there. It was gone. Because, you know, we get into this 
what am I going to do? How are people going to look at me? And think about this. Then nobody really much talked to me anyway, so it wasn't like I was really worried about them. But the thing that happened to me was I was sitting there and I said, Lord, how do I get some nutritious food in my system? I got stuff delivered to me, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. God kind of put it on my heart about something I already knew about making a, a drink. But the drink can actually, you can actually take 10 to 12 drops a day and get all the nutrients you need that you would get every morning in your home when you make up the uh, food process or the blender, whatever you're using. And I concocted that, and sure enough, it works. And I call it my lifesaver, because it did. It saved my life. And I named it Nourish. Nourish. Nourish in a two ounce bottle. You know, I'm not, I'm just telling you, you know, the going through the pain, sleepless nights, stomach always hurting, um, not getting the food I really needed. And I know what I was used to, but when I concocted that in the hospital, I concocted it. And I had things bought to me so I could make up little things, I could figure it out. And all of a sudden, I would take them 10 drops, 11 drops, and my body would jump up full of energy. I was like, wait a minute. So I'm getting the same nutrients I just bottle that I created that if I was at home cooking or making or blending or whatever. And the thing about it, I'm sitting there saying, but it's not what most people think. And it's not. But the, what I loved about it is it vitalized me, gave me back my life, let me function like normal. And when I say nourish, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's a Two ounces, uh, you can put in the refrigerator. One ounce you can put in the refrigerator, one you can't. It depends on what I, what you put in it. But the good thing about it is, what I liked about it, because we always in a hurry, and I noticed when I got out, everybody's in a hurry, and being can't really get in the kitchen and do what you normally do at the moment till you get your prosthetic. You still want to have that nutrition. You got your salads and stuff with the drops. Ah, oh, in the morning you take those drops, and my God, you feel great. I feel great. And I'm like, man, look at this. When I said earlier, sometimes it comes a blessing, things that I never would have ever thought that could happen, happen. And how I feel now, I, I, you know, I'm getting my strength back and I'm trying to go work out at the gym, the top part of my body and one of my legs. Because, you know, at that point, I did lose a leg. And it's coming back. Not the leg, but the prosthetic device is. The prosthetic leg is so I can do Zumba again, so I can possibly jog again. Just get my life back. And it's been humbling though now, I'm gonna be honest, it's been humbling because um, things you normally do, you just can't do no more. You can't drive for a moment because you got one leg and you can't take the wheelchair out, you can't get back in, you can't put it in the car, so it kind of, so of handicaps you. But if you know anybody that is handicapped, hey, stop by them and say hi, call them up and say something to them because you know, you forget about us until we get well and everything seems all right. But my question is, you know, while I was sitting there, what if you, got terribly sick or handicapped and couldn't do some things, are you prepared for that? Are you? What would you do? Because trust me, ain't many friends, ain't many family members around. That ain't happening. Now, I know you. they can tell you that in front of you right now. But I'm going to tell you the truth. A lot of them are lying to you. I'm going to tell you right now, they're lying to you. You got to get some strength. You got to pull on God and things you never put on your life. I had to do it. But you know, look what it gave me a drink, hmm, nourish. But it gave me my mind frame of things that I was wanting to work on, but you know how we so busy? I could work on another book, I could work on me, I could work on getting my motivational guilt, I could, all that stuff I could work on me. But I wanna ask you though, if you was disabled and couldn't work no more, what would you do? How would you function? Who would you depend on? Because it's that way. And I think about it all the time, the nights I cried, oh, I cried. I ain't gonna tell you no story, cause I didn't have I didn't have no world no more. I didn't have nobody that felt that loved me no more. Uh, I was in pain tremendous for a moment. My stomach was towed up. My digestive system was just never functioned the same way it was. The stuff they was giving my blood pressure went off the roof. Uh, 
And I understand now, I was taking so much medicine and trying to come back to life. I just didn't know what was going on. I couldn't even function. So I just want you to think about all that right there. So when you're going through whatever you're going through and you think you can't make it, let me tell you, you can make it. When it seems like you're at your lowest and nobody wants to say anything positive to you, stay away from negative people because they're always going to be negative. They're never going to do anything for you. I always tell you something you don't want to hear. Now, you already going through. So why would you bring someone, you, uh, anybody, a negative information? Don't let it, don't even bring it to them. And I had to learn one thing. I cut the TV off and I started reading motivational and more positive books that I always read. Anyway, I had to cut the TV off because as I'm sitting there, all I'm looking at is negative news, negative, negative stuff, negative, negative. You know what? I'm already going through my own challenges. When you're going through your own challenges and you go home every day, turn that TV off. Don't let a child watch TV when they're going to school in the morning. Their mind should be fresh on what's going to happen today. But you put something negative on their mind. Of who got shot? Who got stabbed? Who got robbed? And all that. They don't need to hear that. When you're going to work, put something positive in there that they can hear. They can sense motivational. No, forget about the songs and the DJs and all that music. Put something that they can learn on. Because you know what? That's all we got. I know some of you say, well, that's, that's kind of hard. No, it's not. How can a two-year-old sing a song word for word but can't say the ABCs? Help me out. But it's about you, though. Yeah, I went through it. I'm still going through it every day. Not in a bad way. I got a blessing because I got my life back. Yeah, I don't have a leg. I do not have a left leg. Wow. But it's going, I'm going to have a prosthetic one day. But the challenge is you, though. What are you going to do if you lose a leg, if you lose an arm, or you just get sick and can't work no more? What would you do? How would you function? What would you believe? You know, we are what we think about all day long, positive, whatever. You know, your mind is so powerful. What you put in really comes out. And it's amazing as you try to go up or go back to school, get a better education, you try to get a better job promotion, you try to change your life. It's amazing how much negativity is about why you want to do this. Because it's you. Get away from those negative people. See, a lot of times you can't get promoted because the person you're hanging with. Mm. That's why. Because the supervisor or somebody want to promote you, thinking that you're going to promote that negative person sitting beside you, that you don't know the conversation they've had. See, the reason we can't get a job a lot of times is because of the negative factors around us. If you want to change your life, change your environment. Change your environment. Because it's amazing how many people I talk to that are stressed all day long and making more money than you can imagine, but they're stressed, they're unhappy with their lives, they're unhappy with their family, they just can't function. If you watch the news every day, or you watch the news on your phone, you, you people are always talking to you about somebody that had plenty of money, but they killed themselves. Wow. Ain't that something? What are you going to do? How are you going to change yourself? Hey guys, this is Tim Moore. I just want to let you know. You know, that's going to be a link below this. If you want to talk, click that link. We can talk. Because like I said, I hope this never happened to you. I pray it never happens to you. But I hope you change and write down some goals and aspirations and things that you want to do in life. Write them down. And then look at them every day. And say, I'm going to make this happen. I don't mean some 10 years from I'm talking about today. What do you want to change in your life today? What are you hungry to do? What is that one thing you always want to do in your life but you've never done it? Because you let other factors, other people get in your dreams and steal them. You are what you think about all day long. You know, you got to learn to execute. Learn how to look at life for yourself. The question, do you love you for who you are? Let's just talk about it. Do you love yourself? Because to move on, to get the things that you want to get, you got to love yourself. And we don't fail in this fantasy that we talk to God, we pray to God, and this is going to walk through that door. You've got to work for what you want. Believe me, you have to work for what you want. So guys, I just want to give you that story and say, hey, whatever you're dealing with, it ain't that bad. You're still here. Whatever your problem is, it can be solved. Now, but you got to want to solve it. And you got to quit blaming other people. you got to look in that mirror and say, it's me. It's me. You know, we used to sing that song back in the day. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Lord, it's me standing in this mirror. Help me. 
And guess what? He will help you, but you got to want that help. So, you know, this is a quick message. Be blessed. Remember, there's a link below. Click on it. Let's talk about it. Let's make your life better today. Hey, you know what the thing about it is? I took that uncomfortable out of your life if you're diabetic, you got to have blood pressure, whatever you're dealing with. That's ways that you can get around it. And it don't cost nothing. What I'm saying about cost, just some slight, slight changes in your life. Just think about it. You ain't got to starve yourself to be non-diabetic. You ain't got to starve yourself to not have the high blood pressure. You ain't got to starve yourself to overcome cancer with, with your doctor's help. But you know what? Get those negative people out of your life. Remember the links below. Talk to you soon. Be blessed.